One Ideas a Minute man who entered the den back in 2007 was Mark Champkins. He came looking for a £100,000 investment for 15% of his range of school products. Mark Champkins, well, he was the typical inventor that I would read in books and that I imagined in books. My business designs products that help children to concentrate and be at their best so they can get the most out of their time at school. I'm a trained engineer. I studied at Cambridge and at the Royal College of Arts. I've won £45,000 worth of prizes to fund my business. I've been to China to source manufacture. I've set up the supply chain, set up the website with online sales. So perhaps I should show you the products. The first of the products is a school bag that makes school chairs more comfortable. So you hang your bag up over the back of the chair and then it folds out this padded area over the backrest and seat of the chair and makes the school chair more comfortable. The next product encourages children to drink more water. If you're just 2% dehydrated, your concentration can drop up to 20%. Uh, and then this product is the food for thought lunchbox. And then the final product is a cooler bag, which keeps it nice and fresh and cool. I've sold £15,000 worth of products in the last four months, and I'd be interested to use your investment to capitalise on the sales that I've had already, and also to bring a number of new product ideas I've developed to market as quickly as possible. I was selling my ideas going forward, so I, I think that that was a sensible way of pitching it. Very, very quickly they got to see that this guy was a mad hatter, but he actually had a, another side to him as well, which could actually make money. It was an impressive pitch, but Deborah Meaden had some concerns about the branding of Mark's inventions. How appealing do you think this design is to seven and eleven year olds? How do they get engaged and excited by they things? Get something that's new, something that's inventive, something that they haven't seen before, something that they can show their friends. Or, or something all their friends have, something they see on television, Sponge something that looks pretty. Square pants. That's quite an adult looking design. Mm. I deliberately designed the products to make them kind of plain and uh, I thought kind of classy. Um, but I could see your point. I think that parents are also, obviously they're the ones that part with the money. Yeah, but if the child don't like it, he's going to misplace it. Four of the dragons couldn't see the money-making potential in Mark's ideas and declared themselves out in quick succession. I was feeling it kind of slipping away from me at that point. Only Peter Jones remained to throw him a lifeline. I actually really like the seat. I think it's very clever. I'm really interested and I'm going to make you an offer. And to be clear that the offer is contingent on you, I'm willing to take a calculated risk because I think you are going to come up with one or two products that are going to make it. Yeah. I was really pleased when he said he was going to make me an offer, but I was kind of bracing myself for a really a tough deal. I'm going to offer you £100,000. Yeah. In return for? In return for 40%. Peter Jones had laid down the gauntlet, but Mark had other ideas. 30%. Um, Mark, I'm not going to punt it for 30%. I'm uncomfortable at 40. 35, I would be comfortable at. I've gone, I've gone up from 30. Give uh, me the total profit you're going to make in three years. 1.3 million. How about we say... If you make, in three years, £250,000 profit, I'll give you that 5% back. OK. Let's do that. Are you going for it? Yep. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Hooray! Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Peter, always invest in the person rather than the, than the product. And I think in this case, he did exactly that, because I think this guy is going to invent a whole lot of wacky ideas, and I'm sure one of them is going to make him a multimillionaire. It's now four years since Mark appeared in the den, but did he reach the target Peter set? What we ended up doing was 250 grand for uh, as a turnover target rather than a profit target. And uh, over the 
last three years I've managed to hit that target so I got my 5% equity back which is absolutely brilliant so actually the deal has worked out very well. Since the den this prolific inventor has not only tripled his product range but he's also found another creative outlet for his ideas writing. In fact Mark has just had his first book published about something very close to his heart. This is a bit of a departure from product design but the book itself is all about the bizarre and uh, intriguing inventions that public figures and celebrities have, have dreamt up. You know, Jamie Lee Curtis inventing a nappy, she's in there, and uh, Charlie Sheen's chapstick. It kind of just, it brings it all together. I'm really, really pleased. And on top of his new writing career, Mark has another venture in the pipeline. So I'm now the Science Museum's very first inventor in residence, which means that I can come to the archives and look in the collection that the Science Museum have and design new products and really understand what it takes to come up with a world-changing invention. I think I've done very well with school products, but what I'm trying to do moving forward is come up with some products that have a wider audience. Today, Mark is meeting up with his dragon partner. Hello, Mark. Hello, Peter. What a great place for a meeting. Yeah, nice to see you. To talk about how his new role can benefit their business. Why would you want to be, for a day a week, inventor in residence? I get the kudos. Yeah. But what's the real reason behind it? Well, I think to come up with a good idea, you have to have a good problem and you have to see the steps that it takes to get into the market and really make a difference. And where better to understand how that happens than here? And the other thing that I'm doing for the museum is I'm using the collection of interesting artefacts to design them products that they can sell at retail. Who owns the rights to the product? Me and the Science Museum. But they exploit it, they manufacture it, they do the, the kind of licensing side of it, and then we just take a royalty from the initial idea. As well as showing the dragon around his new inspirational office. Wow. I think Theo would like this. Yeah, I mean, if you got in it, you wouldn't see him though, would you? <laughs> quite big. Mark also wants to get Peter's thoughts on some of his own inventions in the hope that his dragon will think one of the prototypes could be a worldwide bestseller. So there's a few things here. The first thing I want to show you is inspired by an old style gramophone. So it's a sort of five ten pound price point for kids who want to amplify their music on their phones. But you don't have a speaker in here? Nope. It's just the way that the trumpet works to amplify the sound. So I can uh, demonstrate okay. if I just put a song on here. So you get a certain amount of noise, yeah. but when you put it in the gramophone, it amplifies it right up. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It genuinely does. Um. I think that's quite clever. Thanks, Is there any way you can make it out of something else cheaper but not plastic so it doesn't kill the environment? Or could you, you could, use, you, recycled could plastic. you use recycled cardboard? You could, yeah, you could make it out of card. Yeah. Bit gimmicky. Looks like a gramophone. Yeah, I think people might buy it. One idea approved, on to the next. So these are levitating cutlery. So the cutlery itself and your place table mat will levitate above the placemat, Oops. like so. And if you think in the kitchen where you're mixing or you're doing something and you've got stuff all over your mixing spoon and you don't want to put it on a work surface, to have it levitate above the work surface and not get that work surface dirty That would really freak smart. me out. Did you spend much time thinking of this idea? <laughs> uh, yeah, a reasonable amount of time. OK, well, I don't, I don't want to be too critical then. <laughs> I've crashed. Sorry. Not all of Mark's ideas are inspiring his business partner. So this is a chopping board with a magnetic strip through it. But Peter still seems encouraged by his innovation. After all, some of the greatest inventors in history didn't have their true eureka moment until much later in life. There's not a killer idea here that's going to make us both a fortune, but there's some really clever ideas that you've come up with that I think will make money. Mm. But it was interesting just you and I sparking off each other then, thinking, right, ooh. I mean, you even got me thinking about yeah. ideas and different things, which is interesting. Next year, Mark is predicting a turnover of £175,000. But at the moment, all of the company's profits are being put back into the business to develop ideas for new products. 
But far from being disheartened, Peter knows that it's his job to nurture Mark's creative brain into thinking commercially. Mark's a real ideas man. I just want him to think even more now about what is the next thing? What will people want to buy? And I think he's got to fill that void between thinking of an idea and actually, would I buy it? I think it's great that Peter's on board and it really encourages me that he's kind of by my side and coming up with the business perspective on my ideas and really helping me to see what's going to work and what's not. I think we'll, we'll make a decent amount of money and who knows, surrounded by all these inventions, might come up with uh, the next big thing.